Hey there, everybody. Today, Lily and I, we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of purchasing a manufactured home on a land lease versus purchasing a manufactured home on land itself. Right, let me get my coffee here. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, honey, but I am now that I am short woman, but why every time you show only my head? Maybe I get some books and put them under your butt. Uh, I, I need to, yeah, I need to go. I need new chair. <laughs> We're going to get you a child's high chair. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's different level. <laughs> Can we start, please? Okay. All right. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Roy and Lily from Foster Homes. <laughs> hey everybody, how you all doing today? Uh, today we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of uh, land lease manufactured home parks versus parks where you actually own the, the manufactured home and the land. But before I begin, I just want to put one subject to rest because more than one time I have gotten uh, emails from people or even phone calls from individuals that go something like this. Uh, I want to move to Florida. I have forty or fifty thousand dollars to spend. I want to purchase a manufactured on land where I own the land. I don't want any mortgage payments. I don't want any HOAs and I don't want any type of lot rents. What do you got? Well, <laughs> to be truthful with you, I don't know if anything like that exists, but I can tell you one thing. If it does exist, it's not going to be here in the state of Florida. If such properties did exist, believe me, Lily and I, we'd be living on one of those right now. And if I had extras, I would even share them with you guys because I'm sure th there's a lot of you out there right now who would like to be in on that particular deal. But, you know, just again, to put this to rest, okay, if that's what you're looking for, it's just not going to happen here in Florida. Florida is not a cheap place to retire. You can't come to Florida and live for free. It's just not going to happen, especially on just forty or fifty thousand dollars. So now that we established the fact that you can't live in Florida for free, what are your options when you're considering manufactured homes? Well, there's two ways that you could possibly go. You could go with what's called, and this is for you folks who are new to this, by the way, okay? Some of you already know this, but uh, the first one is purchasing a manufactured home in a land lease park like Lily and I have here in Spanish Lakes Country Club Village. This is where you own your manufactured home, but you pay a lot rent for the land underneath it. Now, the second is going to be what's called a resident-owned park or a co-op. This is where you own both the manufactured home and either the land directly underneath it or a small portion of everybody's lots throughout the entire park. All right, so what's, what's the difference money-wise between purchasing a home and a land lease park versus uh, a resident-owned park? Okay, well, when, when you're purchasing a home in a land lease park like this, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be paying lot rent, okay? Uh, when you're purchasing a home in a resident-owned park, you're going to be paying what's called HOA or homeowners association fees. Now, the difference is, is that lot rent could be considerably higher than what you're paying for HOA. All right, so what is HOA exactly? So let me explain it to you. When you purchase in a resident-owned park, okay, not only are you purchasing a piece of land, but you're also purchasing a piece of the swimming pool, a piece of the clubhouse, a piece, a piece of the bocce courts, a piece of the tennis courts, okay? You're going to own all of that, or I should say you're going to be a partial owner of all of that, which means that you're partially responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep of all of that, as well as the infrastructure of the park that you're purchasing at. Now, everybody, I'm going to let you in on the best kept secret on affordable living here in the state of Florida. And it does make a difference whether you're purchasing in a land lease park or if you're purchasing in a resident owned park. As a matter of fact, I don't care what you're buying. I don't care if you're purchasing a million and a half dollar estate in Boca Raton or just a $10,000 manufactured home in Leesburg. Whatever it is that you're buying, pay cash. I'm telling you, you will save yourself mega thousands of dollars by eliminating any type of financing, giving you more disposable income every single month to enjoy everything that Florida has to offer. So again, you know, I stress highly, try to pay cash up front for whatever you're buying. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first pros and cons here. So we're going to be using our website located at fourstarhomes.com. And all I'm going to do is come down here to this big search box and I'm going to hit search. 
and this is going to pull up all the homes available and right now we're showing 655 homes available and everybody I can guarantee you that most of those homes nearly all of them as a matter of fact are going to be located in land lease parks and when we scroll down this list, you're going to see all the different prices. There's a huge variety of prices that you could possibly choose from. Some of these starting from as low as $24,000 and going up from there. I mean, but take a look, just about everything you could possibly want. And when I get to the bottom of this list, you can see there's 39 pages of these homes available for you to look at. All right, now let's go back up here. We're going to go back to the main page at fourstarhomes.com, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to look at manufactured homes plus land. So I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to hit search. Now when we when we get the results of this search, we're only showing 19 homes available only 19 homes so that's telling me that for every 35 homes available in a land lease park you're only going to find one home in a resident or co-op type of a park now let's take a look at these prices we got 175 187 189 so obviously the upfront price of these homes is going to be a lot higher than the upfront price uh, for homes located in land lease park when you're looking at homes located in resident owned parks generally these particular homes will start at about a hundred thousand dollars and go up from there on the average i think you could probably start thinking a hundred and sixty thousand dollars we're going to go ahead and use 160 as our numbers to work with for the rest of this video so just to start off we're going to give two pros to homes located in land lease communities number one for the availability number two for the upfront cost needed now, if you're still interested in purchasing a home in a resident-owned community, don't be discouraged. Here's the whole thing. You have to give yourself more time. Let me give you an example. If you're planning on moving to Florida next year, you can't wait until next year to start looking for these homes because it might take you another year just to find one. So if you're planning to move to Florida next year, the best thing you could possibly do is to start looking for these homes right now. And if something comes up between now and then that you really like, if you think it's a great deal, then you really need to be prepared to act on it. So the first thing I wanted to address is Lily's favorite, which is what, honey? Ah, oh, it's an armchair critic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> armchair critics out there. Take something for us. <laughs> okay, so I already know there's somebody out there going, well, you're just better off buying a piece of land and putting a manufactured home on that. Yeah, maybe not such a good idea. Again, this is a subject that we covered in more detail. We have a video out about that. If you're interested in watching that video, I'm going to put a link to it here on the top of the screen someplace at the end of this video. And I'm also going to put a link to it in the description section. Now that we have a pretty good idea of what it's going to cost up front to purchase in either one of these kind of parks, let's go ahead and discuss what it's going to cost you to live there on a monthly basis. Now for the land lease, what I did is I took the uh, average prices of over 2,000 homes at Four Star Homes did in 2022. And I also did the same thing with lot rent. So the average home price on a land lease in 2022 was 55 grand with an average lot rent of $580. Now on the resident owned side of that, you can see there is no lot rent, but the average HOA uh, is about $250 in any of these retirement communities. Now, don't forget, you're going to have taxes to pay also in a resident owned community because you now have property. Regardless of which scenario you go with, cash is king. If you're able to pay for your house completely upfront in a resident owned community, it will pay you long-term dividends in the long run. This is a big, big pro for resident owned communities. As you can see, just in this example, you would be saving over $200 a month, but a lot of parks actually cost a lot more to live in than the 580 we're showing here. So that's a minimum that you would be saving. So you could be saving two, three, four, even $500 a month versus buying a home in a land lease community. What would happen though, if you couldn't pay the full $160,000 upfront and you needed to take out a mortgage for part of the balance? Okay, so here's where things could start to turn ugly, and this is where a pro can actually turn into a big con as far as purchasing in a resident-owned community. Taking that $55,000 and using it as a down payment to get a mortgage for 15 years, go ahead and take a look at this. Look at those bottom numbers. Now in that resident-owned park, you're paying approximately $600 more than the person in the land lease park. 
Not only that, but if you successfully paid this loan off in 15 years, you would have paid an extra $44,460 just in interest. How about a home in a land lease park? For example, if you saw this house out in Edgewater, Florida for $125,000 and you really fell in love with it, but all you had was that initial $55,000, how would the financing on this play out? Actually, it's going to come out worse than taking a mortgage out in the resident-owned park. Reason being is that the interest rates are going to be a lot higher because of the fact there's no land involved. Not only will you be paying almost $1,800 a month to live in this park, but by the time you're done paying this loan off, you would have paid an additional interest payment of over $54,000. That makes this particular option a really, really big con. So what if you only had $55,000 up front and you were considering either purchasing the $125,000 home in a land lease park or the $160,000 home in the resident owned park? Which of the two would be the smarter choice? Well, if you put both homes side by side, you can easily see that purchasing in a resident owned park would be the smarter move. Not only would it be cheaper to live there on a monthly basis, but in the long run, you'd be saving about oh, $10,000. Your mortgage payment would be a bit higher than that in a land lease park, but you'd actually be getting more for your money. So if you had to choose between the two evils, the resident owned park would get the pro. However, if you step back and take a look at the big picture, you would see that paying cash up front will save you thousands and thousands of dollars as well as an overall lower monthly cost. With that in mind, I would have to give the whole idea of financing anything at all a total con. Они, стоп, 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 uh, uh, tell them, please, uh, about the other critical... Uh, oh, the armchair uh, critics? Oh, oh, I know what you're here. talking about. That's the one sitting there going... Oh, yeah, the one sitting there going right now going, oh, but they can raise the lot rents any time that they want, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know that's what you were talking about. Okay, and, th and that's absolutely right, everybody. So, you know, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our con on the land lease parks only because of the fact that lot rents do increase. But, you know, for anybody to sit there and think that lot rents are going to go down every year or stay the same every year, everybody in the scheme of things, that's just nothing more than a pipe dream. But now on the other hand, if you're in a resident owned park, for you to assume that your HOA is going to go down or stay the same, or uh, if, if your property taxes are going to go down or stay the same, or your home insurance is going to go down or stay the same, that too is also a pipe dream. So, I mean, it's just like everything else in the world, everything that we live with, everything is going up. Uh, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. Sorry, it isn't our fault. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask us about it. Right. right, if you have if you have any complaints, send them over to Lily. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have next questions. Go ahead. Uh, which uh, which uh, way is the best? Well, you know, I'll tell you I what. Mean, I mean, everybody. Okay, yeah. I mean, it, well, let's, let's just start with purchasing a manufactured home, you know. I don't think there is a perfect way to buy anything, okay, including manufactured homes. Everything's going to have pros and cons. It just depends on what's best for you as the buyer. But I mean, that's going to hold true for just about anything. I'm, I mean, I'm talking manufactured homes, uh, condominiums, townhouses, single family homes. I mean, anything like that. And for another one of your armchair critics out there, by the way, who are going, oh, lot rent payments are equal to what mortgage payments are. Well, again, that is not entirely true. Uh, once again, we do have a separate video showing this in more detail. If you're interested in watching us crunch the numbers on that, I'll go ahead and put a link to that particular video up here also. And also look for it in the description section. But it's interesting. What? I have more questions, more questions, more questions. Well, you know, Be careful. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and everybody, we do invite your questions. I mean, there's a lot more things that we could discuss, uh, you know, concerning this particular topic. But I just wanted to give you a general overview of the two types of manufactured home parks that you could actually uh, live in. So you have to decide what's best for you. I mean, how much money do you have up front? What kind of a monthly income do you have? What are you looking to spend each month, you know, to live here comfortably? You know, so these are things that you have to decide. But, you know, again, uh, if Lily and I, if we could be of uh, any more assistance to you, uh, all right, maybe a, a lot less Lily and a little bit more me. <laughs> Unless your Russian is very good. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's going to be all we're going to cover on this video. So unless you have something else you want to say, uh, 
Nothing? No, okay. I, no, no, I just think about our park. We have 1,200... 1,200 homes. homes in this park, what right. about people who live here? Right, right. So, I mean, it's a good fit for the 1,200 yeah. of us that live here, but it may not be a good fit for you out there. Uh, again, this is something you're going to have to decide. So, again, you know, those videos that we talked about earlier here, watch for them here on the top of the screen. Go ahead and click on them, watch them if you want to get more information, get a little bit more knowledge. But uh, other than that... I'm done. I'm done too. Okay, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you on our next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.